hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of scamming failures scammers who just don't have what it takes to succeed as a scammer and before we go any further please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already annie would like to start you off with nelson adams hi he said good morning then said annie how are you doing i'm just taking a short break i'm at work okay where are you from I live in Shaftesbury in Dorset. Wow! So nice place, he said, following the latest trend of pretending you know the place where your potential victim lives. It never works. What time is it over there? You know Shaftesbury? That's England, he said. Yes, said Annie. Southwest, he proudly proclaimed. Yes, where are you? I'm in Atlanta, America. My late wife is from England. I meet her in London, so I know little about England. OK, Fanny, hope I can be your friend. You can try. You look so beautiful. I really appreciate to have a beautiful friend like you. That's very kind of you. You're welcome, said our mature man, talking like a mature adult. Do you want to have a few guesses about what he's going to tell her? He does. Where are you working at? He asked. Why are you shouting at me, Sanny? Because he'd written it all in uppercase. I work in a supermarket. I'm not beautiful, he said. You're too beautiful. You're such a flatterer. I'm just honest. How are you? I'm fine. So tell me, how was work today? It was fairly quiet. It usually is on Mondays. How was your work today? Cool. Worked from home. What do you do? I work on the checkouts in the supermarket. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm an engineering consultant and a lawyer, too. What kind of lawyer? Asked oh, Annie. You must have had to do a lot of study and exams to do both lots of qualifications. I did, my dear. What kind of engineering do you do? Civil engineering consultant. What time is it over there? Good morning. Good morning. What kind of lawyer are you? construction this is good isn't it ladies and gentlemen exactly the kind of conversation you'd have with a lawyer if you'd just met them interesting what does a construction lawyer do i prepare documents for the both parties the investors and the construction company oh okay conveyancing said annie yes so how is work today question mark i just got home five minutes ago wow you close early I work shifts. Usually I work on the checkouts in the supermarket. But today I was in the stock room and also did a short stint on the customer services desk. OK, that's good. What's good? You work on shifts? Yes, a different shift most days. OK, one day you gonna be boss, said our mature lawyer. What? asked Annie. One day you'll own your own supermarket. I hope not, said Annie. Why do you say that? Why would I want to own a supermarket? Long hours, staff issues, no thanks. OK. Hope you're OK. Why wouldn't I be? Just asking. OK. Hope I'm not provoking you. I wondered if you meant to send it to someone else who was having a difficult time. No. Just trying to make sure a pretty damsel like you is OK. Well, I'm fine, thanks. OK. What time is it over there? He asked at half past ten on Tuesday night. Good morning, it's 8.20am, said Annie the next day. Good morning, beautiful. How are you doing? We just stopped for a quick lunch break. OK, hope you ain't stressing yourself much. Oh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. OFGS, grow up, it's work. Are you one of those idiots who thinks no one should do any hard work but think they should get paid a lot of money for doing nothing? No, I work hard. Good, said Annie, and then the man realised what she'd said. Why calling me insult? Am I an idiot? Why should you use such words on me? Bam! Oh, you don't know, you tell me, said Annie. You're now acting like a hurt, offended, small West African boy. That's bad, he said. What the hell do you mean? I asked if you're one of those idiots who thinks no one should do any hard work. And now you're saying I've insulted you. Which, if you think about it, means you agree you are an idiot who thinks no one should do hard work. And you are a hurt, offended, small West African boy, not a mature working man. Pardon? 
said our heart, offended small West African boy. And can I just add in here, I don't mean any disrespect or offence to small West African boys. Yeah, read it carefully, said Annie. What are you saying? he said, in reply to her saying, You are a hurt offended small West African boy. I asked if you were one of those idiots. You said I'd insulted you, which means you agree you are one of those idiots. Think about it. Think carefully about what you answered. You agreed you're one of those idiots. Otherwise, you'd have said, no, I'm not one of them. Please, if you don't want me text any more, let me know, he said. Instead, you said I'd insulted you. No, I don't want to talk to a kid who's acting all offended and thinks I called him an idiot. When if you read what I said, you'll realise I didn't. I didn't call you an idiot, but you agreed that you are one. So goodbye. Grow up and go back to school. To which our hurt offended small West African boy replied, OK, and disappeared. Dominic Hendricks knew how to impress a lady when he introduced himself to Annie. Hello, he said. Hi, said Annie. How are you doing? Where are you from? he asked. He lives in Shaftesbury and Dorset. Oh, that's nice. Can we get to know each other more? We can try. Oh, good. Hope you're real. Can I see your picture? Are you some kind of weirdo or pervert? Go away, said Annie. What do you mean? I don't think what I ask is too much. It's a very strange way to introduce yourself to a lady that you sent a friend request to. I don't trust you. OK, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be sure of who I'm talking to. That's weird, said Annie. Who do you think you're talking to and who are you? L.I.E., said her man, for good measure. That doesn't matter. You really are acting weird. I have no idea who Ale is, but I've never met her. Goodbye. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Persephone would like to help you solve one of those perpetual mysteries in Scamland. What does a marine engineer do? And ladies and gentlemen, I probably should warn you now, if you're eating or drinking, towards the end of this little segment, it might be a good idea to stop. Hello, dear, he said. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. I hope you're having a good day. I've been doing some painting in the shower room. OK, so how's the weather conditions over there right now? Why do you want to know? Just asking. A very strange, random question to ask unless you have a reason. Who are you? I'm just a Facebook friend. But you want to know what the weather conditions over here are right now. There has to be a reason for asking. You don't even know where there is. Where are you from? He asked. I'm from out Mangalinia, but I live in a Mockney. I'm from Washington, D.C. OK. So what do you do for a living? He asked. I don't work. My divorce settlement supports me. What do you do? OK. As for me, I'm a marine engineer. That sounds interesting. What does that mean? Meaning I'm a marine engineer who work underwater. That doesn't help. Said Persephone, telling me that being a marine engineer means you're a marine engineer. Obviously, what do you do? What does a marine engineer do? Under or over water? To which our man replied, Yes. Oh, FJS, said Persephone. What do you do as a marine engineer? Do you design oceans, build marinas? No, he said. Wire up remote control submarines. What do you do? Is that simple enough? I've typed everything three times. A man sent a photograph of a man standing on a dock in front of a ship. Unless it's a woman, I couldn't quite tell. You stand on a dock posing like an idiot in front of a ship and get paid for it. Now are you going to tell me what you do? Or are you just a thick idiot who has no idea what he's talking about? Think carefully about your answer, very carefully. Proper mature explanation or idiotic kid answer. And not a copied and pasted answer from Google. I'm asking what you personally do. Our man thought about it. I said, I'm a marine engineer who designed and oversee testing, installation and repair of marine apparatus and equipment, said another member of the team. No, you didn't say that. OK. And where do you test, install and repair this magical apparatus and equipment? Marine engineer, he said. Normally do that in the office. Or sometimes we go to the sea to text or repair what we have designed or what we built there. Oh, you repair the equipment in your own office, underwater. 
Do you have a very large office that you can put large equipment in or a small office for smaller apparatus? Large office where I and my colleagues do that. OK, I think I understand. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're sitting comfortably. And if you are eating or drinking, maybe just swallow now because Persephone is about to sum it up for you. And now you'll know what a marine engineer does. OK, I think I understand. You get the large equipment brought to your underwater office so you can test and repair it. Then you go to the sea to repair again because you designed and built it there. Then you connect that large equipment to the apparatus you designed underwater. To which our man replied, Yeah! Thanks for understanding. Followed a few hours later. Bye. So, can you send me a picture of you so I can see your beautiful face? Sir? So, said Persephone. Can you tap on the picture on my profile so you can see my beautiful face? Send me another pic, he demanded. Oh, you're one of those rude demanding bullies. If you don't like the picture you can see, you can go and stick yourself where the sun don't shine. Goodbye. And so our man did as instructed and disappeared. It didn't take team Andrew Bennett very long to realise that they weren't having a good day when they tried contacting Cassandra. Hello, pretty. Good afternoon, flatterer, replied Cassandra. How are you over there? I'm fine, thanks. Am I supposed to know you? Yeah, that's nice. I'm Andrew Bennett from Toledo, Ohio. So what about you? I live near Barry St Edmunds in Suffolk. OK, that's nice. Why do you say that? Nothing, he said. How odd. Well... I will appreciate us being good friends in sincerity, honesty and trust. Although we just knew each other, we can share ideas and discuss more issues as we talk more about ourselves. And as time goes on, there may be something great for us in the future. What do you say? Cassandra wasn't feeling it. I say you need to find a different script that hasn't been used a gazillion times already. What do you say? I don't understand what you're talking about. Trey reading it more slowly. I'm sure you'll work it out. A man tried calling her. Good afternoon. What do you want? Are you going to talk to me? You're not. You're just going to be a time-wasting idiot. OK, well, if you can't be bothered to talk, I can't be bothered to talk to you. Goodbye. If you can't be bothered to talk, then I can't be bothered either. Goodbye. He called her again. Are you going to talk to me or not? Hello. Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? How are you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can hear me. Hello. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So how are you doing? I'm fine. Well, I was better until you started sprouting off the same rubbish that a million other people have said. You know, at least try and write something for yourself. It would make you sound so much more believable. You know, if you want to talk up a lady so on, if you want to, to talk, if you want to talk up a lady online, write something for yourself instead of using a script that someone else has used a million times. You know, I've heard it all before. It's not original. Really. I don't know what you are talking about, okay? Of course you do know what I'm talking about, okay? So what are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything. You're using a script that you've copied and pasted. And I've heard every single word of that, word for word, several times before. It's not original and it's not clever. You need to write something for yourself. If you want to impress a lady, write something for yourself instead of copying and pasting something really stupid. And don't try to say, I don't understand what you're talking about, because even you can't be that thick. Well, maybe you can. I could be wrong, of course. Oh, obviously, I am wrong. If you want to impress a lady, it would be so much better to write something for yourself, she said. So, what are you trying to say right now? How sick are you? Or are you just a total idiot? 
I said, if you want to impress a lady, you should write something yourself, not copy and paste a load of drivel that many, many others have used before. Assume you can read well enough to read all of that. Your next answer will tell me if you are A, unable to read, or B, just an idiot. So think carefully before answering very carefully. To which our man replied, I don't know what you're talking about right now. Okay, you've chosen B, just an idiot. Goodbye. Why you didn't pick up your video call? He said. And if you were looking at the screen, you'll see that Cassandra had her camera covered and our man didn't have his turned on. I answered you twice, or did you think you were talking to yourself? Being as sick as you are, you might have thought that. Can I see your photo? It's right here on Facebook, so yes, I think you probably can see it. OK, it's fine. No problem about that. I knew you could do it. He tried calling her while I was in the kitchen. I don't have time for time-wasting idiots. Tell me what are you doing right now, he said. What kind of idiotic, childish question is that? I'm filling in some forms online for DEFRA. What are you doing right now? Eh, what's your favourite colour? Have you eaten? And what are your hobbies and your plans for the future? Assume you're due to retire. He called her again. Now what do you want? Hello. Yes, hello. What do you want? Hello. I said hello. What do you want? How are you doing? What do you want? What are you trying to say? It's a simple question. It's only three words. Well, it might be four. What do you want? Why have you called me? You can't even answer a simple question. What do you want? Why did you call me? I want you as a friend. Then why didn't you say so? Because I want us to be friends, he said. Then why didn't you say so? Assume you can read. Hello? So you're saying we can't be friends? I'm asking you another simple question. Why didn't you say that when I asked, instead of cutting the call like a childish idiot? And why do you pretend you can't read what I'm saying? Or can you really not read? Oh, OK, I'm sorry about that. We should just move on and continue to make our friendship stronger with each other, for I feel we can make the best out of anything that is going on right now. Why won't I be able to read? I was just skipped about that. That's why we need to just move on and know how we can make this friendship stronger than this. And I know it may lead to something nice. In what is going on right now? Like we arguing on something we know we can just talk about and forget about one particular thing and that's your asking, why didn't I say that and that's what I really want, your friendship. Oh, go on, make my day and tell me you're a highly educated American man. Oh dear, shouldn't have said that, Persephone. Yes, he said, and let's get to know each other by introduction first. Go on, tell me what you do, where you claim to have been educated. I'm originally from Berlin, Germany, unless I'm not. I mean, I did that, obviously, but my mum is an Australian. And, but, we lived in the United States, and I was born and brought up in the United States. Then you can tell me why you can barely string a sentence together when you call me and write meaningless drivel. Even a brain-dead idiot like you must know that you can't be originally from Berlin if you were born and brought up in the US. Why do you think I can barely string a sentence? Because you can't. My dad's a German, he said. Yes, you were born and brought up in the US. So what am I doing, he said in reply to her saying he can't string a sentence together. So you are originally from the US? Yes. In case it's escaped your notice, she said, you're typing, not calling. I realise that's a difficult concept to understand. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, United States. Congratulations, replied Cassandra. I'm trying. Yes, he said. In reply to her saying, in case it's escaped your notice, you're typing, not calling. Well, try harder. Or call me, demonstrate your impressive Ohio accent, tinged with a bit of Australian and a bit of German. Oh, wait, you'd have to actually have an Ohio accent to do that, not one from somewhere that isn't Ohio or Germany or Australia. By the way, have you ever met Frank Capaldi or Ethan Grey or Hakan Chalik? You can Google them to help you decide. And she said that because the photo that he was using was of Hakan Chalik.
a Turkish journalist, and Frank Capaldi and Ethan Grey are two more fake profiles using the same photo. At this point, our defeated team retire to the beer parlour for a beer. For some strange reason, known only to himself, David Smith thought he might try his hand at scamming, so he contacted Cassandra. Hello, he said. Good afternoon. OK, where are you from, if I may ask? I live near Mary St Edmunds in Suffolk. Where are you? OK, I'm from Los Angeles, California, but working in Scotland. Are you married with kids or single? I'm single and I don't have children. Where are you in Scotland? Are you married with kids or single? He asked again. Where are you in Scotland? Or is this a game where you ask questions but don't answer them yourself? To which our man replied, Wikipedia. What? asked Cassandra. That's a place in Scotland. What are you doing for a living? I live on and around the family estate. I have 2,000 acres of mixed arable and livestock. Where in Scotland is Wikipedia? To which our man replied, Please stop asking me questions. Don't be rude. You asked where I live, and I told you exactly where I live. I'm just asking where you are in Scotland. If you're too rude to have a proper conversation, you can go away. Goodbye. OK. I'm answering your questions instead of being rude. But please stop asking me questions, too. Can you do me a favour? He asked. No. Buy you a new brain? Please. You want a new brain? Amazon might have some cheap ones on offer. No. What, then? An Apple card. Fifty dollars he said. Michael James James had absolutely no idea at all what he was talking about when he contacted Annie. If you're looking at the screen, you'll see that it says he lives in Liverpool. And if we go to his profile, you'll see it says he lives in Liverpool and is from Birmingham. Good start. He's in the UK. Hello, pretty, he said. Good morning, then. How was your last night? He said. Oh, do you know something I don't? said Annie, thinking maybe he was psychic. I don't, he said. Phew, that's good. All right, where are you from? I live in Shaftesbury in Dorset. Where are you? I'm from Manchester, he said. Which part of Manchester? Manchester, UK. Yes, which part of Manchester, UK? Don't you remember where you live? Pretty, I'm sorry, is that I'm busy talking with my sister at the moment. That's why I'm sorry, he said. Despite having taken a break there, it seems he was unable to access Google Maps. OK, have you remembered which part of Manchester, UK you live in? To which our man replied in uppercase letters. Lancaster. OK. Are you single or married? I guess they moved Lancaster. I'm divorced. All right. Though you have kids? If you say so. Did you move to Lancaster while we were chatting? Because you were in Manchester a few minutes ago. Or did they just move Lancaster? Yeah, I'm in Manchester, in Lancashire, which it isn't. It hasn't been in Lancashire for many years. Or oh, don't you know Lancashire, he said, all in uppercase letters. You said Lancaster, not Lancashire. Or oh, don't you know the difference? I said Lancashire, not Lancaster, he said. So Annie, of course, copied and pasted the bit where he'd said Lancaster. And you still haven't answered my original question. Which part of Manchester do you live in? And ladies and gentlemen, if you're eating or drinking, here's one of those warnings. Please swallow now. In London, he said. Oh, you've moved again. Which part of London did you move to? To which our hapless man replied, get lost. I don't think I've heard of that. I can't decide if you're a total idiot, totally thick or just stupid. Or maybe all three. Goodbye. You just go to my profile and see where I'm from. OK, said our man whose profile I've already shown you, which said he came from Birmingham and lives in Liverpool. Why can't you tell me? OK, and your profile says Birmingham, Liverpool, not Manchester, Lancaster or London. Maybe you should read it. Please, can you send me you pictures? My picture's on here. And she copied and pasted the bit where he'd said, get lost. A man took the hint and did as instructed. Cassandra definitely wasn't feeling it the day she spoke to John Clark. Hello, dear, he said. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. I don't remember who you are, though. Oh, it's OK. I can introduce myself. I'm John, and I like to be friends with you, if you don't mind, dear. Eh, OK, so I don't know you. Are you upset? I assumed you were someone that I know. I'm sorry. I don't mean to intrude into your privacy. I sent you a friend request, and you accepted. So do you mind? We can be friends. I don't see why not. You're about to find out, Cassandra. OK, dear. I saw your profile, and I'm interested to be your friend. Call me John. Where are you from? 
I live near Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk. Where do you live? I'm from Paris, Virginia, but I have a work, and it take me to Syria. And before you think, ah, oh, he's a soldier, let me just show you the Syria he claims to live in. His profile says he lives in Syria, Virginia. This is Syria. In Virginia, it's just a small rural village. Our man has just said, I'm from Paris, Virginia, but I have a work, and it take me to Syria. A work? You're an artist. I'm a Mud Creek engineer. I don't know what that means. A Mud Creek engineer. That's my work, dear. Your profile says Syria in Virginia. I assume you mean that, not the country of Syria. Yes, dear. And you? Yes, you said, said Cassandra in reply to him saying again he was a Mud Creek engineer. I don't know what that means. Please explain before I tell you what I do. OK, I'll explain what I do and what it means. OK, dear? Well, my work deals on how we drill rig works on an oil well or gas drilling. What on earth does that have to do with mud creeks? Are you just typing rubbish because you think it will impress me? Allow me to explain. No. What do you mean? He said, having read what Cassandra had said. Why should I do that? They have no idea. But you're going to explain what you really mean and what it has to do with mud creeks. Then I'll know you're being serious and not typing rubbish to impress me. You know it was founded. 2021, he said. They have no idea what you're talking about. You're supposed to be explaining the connection between mud creeks and drill rig works. Are you able to read well enough to even understand what I'm asking? With time, you'll get to understand what I mean. I can't just be typing a lot, just to explain, dear. Yes, you can. Otherwise, I will know you're making up stupid stories. So you have one final chance to explain what a mud creek engineer really is. Think very carefully about your answer. Sensible explanation or made up ridiculous rubbish. Choose wisely. I only just wanted to be friends, OK? You should browse it, dear. No, if you're too stupid to tell me what your own job is, then I don't want anything to do with you. Goodbye. All right, dear. Next time, choose a fake job that you at least know something about. Try street cleaner, idle layabout. To which our idle layabout replied, What? Hello, L? Matthew Wayne, whose profile says he works for the US Army Esports, whatever that is, thought he'd try slap with Persephone. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thanks. I don't recognise your name. My name is Jerry, said Matthew Wayne. And you? Are you sure? said Persephone. My name's on my account. I told you mine. Yes, I am. So whose account are you using? I don't understand. Does this give you a clue? said Persephone, pasting the bit where he'd said, my name is Jerry, immediately under his name, which said Matthew Wayne. I know you'd show me that. Wait, he said, and sent a photograph of a man with a young girl. Yes, I did take a screenshot, because underneath he said, I'm going to delete it as soon. My name's a Matthew Edmonston, Jerry the Wayne. You see, there's my soldier's friends call me that because of a movie actor. And what was the point of sending me that photo? I don't like sending my photo. It's a social media, he said. I don't know an actor called Jerry the Wayne. I can't send it to you, private. Not Jerry the Wayne. The name, Wayne. He's a actor, a soldier friend I met here in Syria. If you can decode that, guys, please leave it in the comments below. That's meaningless rubbish. Please type it in proper English so it makes sense. What proper English are you talking about? Any that makes sense. American English? You don't understand me? He asked. A lie. Well, duh. I've no idea what you're talking about. I don't know who LA is. Or is that a place? Obviously you aren't American. Where are you from? I'm using the office computer. It's not working good. The keyboard. Then type it slowly. I think you said you have a soldier friend who's an actor and is called Wayne. I'm not sure why that means you call yourself Jerry or why your account says you're called Matthew Wayne. No, I haven't said that, he said, in reply to Persephone, trying to decode what he'd said. Then what did this mean? Wayne, his a actor, a soldier friend I met here in Syria. I had a soldier friend, gave me the name. No, you didn't. It's OK. So I have a soldier friend who decided to call you Jerry. Now explain the bit about an actor, please. He said, I do act like the actor, which his name is Wayne. I don't know any actor called Wayne. I think he was probably talking about John Wayne. And I still don't see what the connection is with being called Jerry. My name is Jerry Edmonston, said the man who previously had said. My name's a Matthew Edmonston, Jerry the Wayne. What's your name? 
Are you sure? That isn't what you said before. Which actor are we talking about, please? Unlike you, my name's right here on my account. And unlike you, it doesn't change. It's very disrespectful to send a friend request and not even look at my name. Now please tell me which actor we're talking about. I see your name either, Gazer, he said. Please type something that makes sense. I don't know him either. Where are you from? It's obvious you don't speak English very well. Obviously not. She said in reply to him saying he didn't know the actor either. You have no idea what you're talking about, do you? I'm from Polish, he said, because he put a lowercase p on it. Furniture Polish, asked Persephone, at which point that man gave up and blocked her. Dennis Lowe thought he might try his luck with Cassandra. Good morning, Cassandra. Good morning. How are you today? In fine, thanks. OK, where are you from? I live near Barry St Edmunds in Suffolk. Do I know you? Not really. Basically, I'm just an online acquaintance. Who cares to really know you some more? If you don't mind, please. OK, where do you live? I live in Pickens, South Carolina. Are you originally from UK? Where do you want to know? I haven't heard of Pickens. Is it a big city? Yeah, it's pretty big and peaceful too, said our man, who clearly had no idea about Pickens. And if the person you're talking to online says something very generic like that, to you about the place where they claim to live. Then you know you're talking to a scammer. Although I really don't have much of friends here. I promise you, my intentions to know you are genuine. I came across your profile. You're very beautiful and interested in you. When you say pretty big, you mean like Los Angeles or New York. Hello, well, of course, nope. Well, I'm actually originally from Rochester, New York. How big? It's about 497 square miles. It's more of a county home, he said, having resorted to Google. Why? You want to visit Pickens? I'm not sure I know what a county home is. Probably an American term. No. When I asked if it was a big city, because I haven't heard of it, I expected a sensible answer. Not a stupid answer, like why you want to visit Pickens makes you sound like a hurt kid. I wasn't sure why you were asking. I had to ship in jovially. It's not that deep. Are you working today? I'm always working. Are you working? I'm in the office right now, filling in some movement orders for some vac cattle. Yeah, I'm actually out of town for work. I work offshore. What do you do? I work as a construction stroke drilling engineer. I travel more often for work offshore. What do you do? I live on and run the family estate. We have 2,000 acres of mixed arable and livestock. Oh, that's great. I'm actually looking forward to investing in estate after retirement, but I haven't made the decision yet. So how does your work goes? Do you have employee working for you too? I have a housekeeper, a farm manager, a stable hand and a gardener. OK, so they all work for you. What do you think? Hello, well. Are you always this straightforward at conversations, girl? LOL. Are you always this daft at reading answers, man? Or do you just like asking stupid questions because you have nothing else to do? Really? I was just asking to no, no offence. So you think when you asked, do you have employee working for you too, that I might have given you a random answer? So what you really want me to say is no, they all work for Tesco in town, but I thought it would sound impressive to say I employ them. I was just curious, since you said you're always working. If you have other people who helps too, that's it. I wasn't thinking about anything else. Well, it's OK. I get it now, though. But you thought you'd ask twice in case I'd changed my mind. So now I'll ask you again, where do you work? Because I'll presume that as you didn't believe me, that can only mean that I shouldn't believe you. I'm sorry if that's it sounded, but I wasn't actually doubting you. But I'm doubting you now. Well, if you want to know, I work in Texas. Where in Texas? You told me that you live in South Carolina. So that's changed. What else would you like to change? If you've listened earlier, you'd see that I told you I usually travel often to work. So you're in Texas for a few weeks for work. Stop picking at everything. I'm not an enemy. I'm just trying to know you because I like you. What I don't get is of your mad or having a bad day because your replies feels like attacking. If you told me sensible things in the first place, that would make life much easier, wouldn't it? So you're just in Texas for a few weeks for work. Or you've really moved to Texas and been working there for years. I'm only here for a couple of weeks. I'll leave when I'm done with work. OK, what are you doing? Right now I'm on break, having lunch and talking to you. What about you? I meant, what are you doing in Texas? I've just finished filling in some forms online. I'll go and shut 
the chickens up soon. It's starting to get dark. Working in Texas. All right, text me when you're here. Yes, we've agreed that. Why is this so difficult? What work are you doing in Texas? That only takes two weeks. I work as a petrol chemical engineer, drilling, extraction, and the rest. And not two weeks, four weeks at max. What are you doing? Why is this so hard? What can you do in four weeks? Basically, we drilling crude, refine, redirect the end product, and also construction and maintenance of pipelines. Don't be ridiculous, you can't construct and maintain a pipeline in four weeks, let alone then drill for oil and refine the end product. Tell me what you are doing, not what a petrochemical engineer does. Which of those things are you personally doing? And stop acting like an idiot who has no idea what he's talking about. Unless you are an idiot who has no idea what he's talking about. Myself? I work as a drilling engineer. My work, basically, I focus on designs, plans, cost and construction of the oil rig itself. I oversee oil and gas operations on the rig and other facilities. OFGS, give the phone back to your mate. Get him to tell me what he's doing for four weeks in Texas. Excuse you, said our hurt scammer. You're in Texas for four weeks. What exactly are you personally, yes, you personally doing? You only have four weeks. You don't have time to design, plan and construct an oil rig. OK, now I get what you mean. OFGS, said Cassandra. There's always a time schedule for each contract we travel for, so we don't finish up. We have to fix the rest for the next travel. But basically, there's always goals to accomplish each contract, not necessarily finishing up the whole rig with that short time interval. To save me typing it again, I'll copy what I said before. And if you can't always answer, then I'll know you're a brain-dead idiot who has no idea what he's talking about. So this is your last chance to give me a sensible answer. Final chance. She copied all the bit about saying... You're in Texas for four weeks. I'll pay set again, so you can read it properly. You're in Texas for four weeks. What exactly are you personally, yes, you personally doing? You know what? I can't continue to keep answering you when you continue to disrespect me and keep insulting me. I take that to mean, yes, I am an idiot who has no idea what he's talking about. Otherwise, it'd be easy to tell me what you're doing. But as you have no idea what you're doing, you obviously can't tell me goodbye. He said... Nice language, replied Cassandra, so now I know for certain you're just a scamming idiot. Goodbye. And she blocked her man. I hope you enjoyed this compilation of scamming failures. I'm sure there'll be many more to come. If you did, please like it, please share it, please comment down below, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again in another video.